Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You're logging into your favorite game, grinding out some gear. A couple of points added to your stats, and you have a virtual beer. Max level is pretty cool, but I'll remind you here, my friend. These games are not about the goal, it's about the journey and not the end. You're listening to MMO Reporter, brought to you by audible.com get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash mmo reporter and by doghouse systems choose your weapon with doghouse systems don't 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 forget about your ults you need to cherish each and every little character you've got no matter what level they're at Hello there, and welcome to MMO Reporter episode 160. That sounds like a dart score, actually. That's 180, but it's 160. Forget about that. Um, I'm Harry, and uh, Chris is not here today because he has to take care of something that is uh, much more important, and we'll punish him for it later. Uh, I am joined, however, by two uh, fantastic people from across the ocean. That's my now it's my line actually. Uh, first of all, uh, let's say a warm welcome to uh, Leonor. Leonor, how are you doing? Hello, minions. I ate three candy bars. I'm ready to go. <laughs> That's uh, that's that's very good of you. I'm proud of you. Um, Let's go. Okay. Uh, and on the other hand, okay, candy, not caffeine. I thought. Anyway, e- on the other side of the line, we have the one and only MMO Bill. Hello, everybody. I have had no candy bars, but I have maybe had a beer or a very very large beer. Let's and go. You sound like you are actually reading from a script. A and very, we- very large. Actually, I have. My agent told me that I had to say that. <laughs> Apparently, it's by shtick, but uh, I don't know if I if if I buy it. But okay, you shouldn't have coined that. You get a new writer. Yeah, I, I, that's it's it's. <laughs> I, I think my agent. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a chat with with uh, with him. This is what you get for hiring a a, a dog to be your agent. So Seth um, Rogen's uh, looking for job. So. Go Actually, cats are, cats make much better agents. They don't care. They hurt you, and they just uh, mooch over you, of, of, of you all the day. So um, uh, this is this is not working. It's too early for me to do s- jokes of an industry that I'm not fully versed in. So I'm just I'm just a writer, damn it. Uh, okay, uh, I think it is important for everybody out there in MMO land to to listen to us uh, talk about what we've been doing last week. And uh, I would, Bill, would you mind starting off the the list and tell us what you've been doing this week? I would be thrilled to. I went on a bit of a Guild Wars two binge. I did, and it's an all alt fest thing. I think I logged into my my only level eighty character maybe for like a minute to finish a daily quest that was way easier on him. Everything else. Uh, I have been trying uh, uh, engineers. I've been trying elementalists. I've been trying uh, mesmers, and and I've just been having a ton of fun. My ranger is actually the one that I've been having the I've been playing the most. Uh, I, I've the dreaded uh, uh, bear ranger that everybody assumes <laughs> is the is the the least skilled player you could possibly imagine. And it's probably not too far from the truth. But is it effective though? It's absolutely effective. I send my bear in, I hit auto attack, and then I go get a drink. And when I come back, everything's dead. Well, you, it, you would think that the most skilled player would pick the class that is the most effective with the least amount of effort. Oh, that's very. That is, that is a skill. I mean, it's stupid. I mean, you could play basketball barefoot on broken glass, but does that make you a more skilled player? There you go. It's 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 it's. Skill with your mind as opposed to with your twitchy fingers. I like that. You've made me feel better already today. I'm 8% happier because of that, Harry. Thank you. Oh, that's my job today. I will make everybody happy. And we'll, we'll hap- I, will, I will not promise happy endings. Uh, did you do anything else? <laughs> oh, speaking of no happy endings, uh, I did try uh, ESO. Uh, I gave it a good run during their, their, uh, their open beta stress test this weekend, and it was 
okay. And I felt by the end of it that I would have rather sp- played Skyrim for an hour. I w- Ugh, this this is yeah. I w- we'll talk. I will talk about that in my bit. But I yeah. agree completely. So, so that was that was my ESO run, um, and I also did the Flappy Bird farewell tour. We apparently were not. Aww. Apparently, our last show was just too scathing, and it was too much for uh, the developer for Fla- for Flappy Bird to handle. And he's withdrawn from the Flappy Bird gaming universe, and I'm pretty sure it's all our fault. So we should feel terrible about that. What? To, to be to be fair, I, I actually felt a bit embarrassed because everybody was talking about Flappy Bird, <laughs> and so were we. Yeah. I mean, there was there wasn't even a hint of originality there because every podcast, every news outlet, even mainstream media had a freaking Flappy Bird story. Mm-hmm. And so did we. So we are we are not we are really in the back. To to be fair, the very first I'd ever heard of Flappy Bird was on this show. I had yeah, never even comprehended a Flappy Bird before I sat down on this show. And then every other article <laughs> that I read in my entire feed list was about ha- Flappy Bird. I'm pretty sure that's the mathematical truth of it. Uh, and now it's all gone, but I have a feeling, I, I heard a number that that dude was making $50,000 a day off of Flappy yeah. Bird. And to me, yeah. that seems like a ridiculous number. I'm sure there's only a very tiny grain of truth to that, that maybe that's what Flappy Bird generated. And he got a tiny percentage of that after Google's <laughs> cut and taxes and all that kind of stuff. But still, even if he did only get a tiny percentage of that, I wouldn't mind that tiny percentage. It's such a weird story, and and I I was patient patient zero because I I introduced the virus, yeah, <laughs> and, and and was resistant to it because I I I, th- I think I've played it three times after that and just maybe j- actually just to see if it was still working after he took it down. Have you heard that there were actually there is this 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 phone with Flappy Bird installed that went for thousands of dollars on eBay? Not phone. Try phones. There was I, I the article I read that there was there was probably there were dozens of these phones listed and they were pulling in over a thousand dollars a phone. That's what? ridiculous. Like, I, I, I can't even, like, I'm looking at my phone that's got Flappy Birds installed, and I'm thinking, do I love this phone? I don't love <laughs> yes. my phone. Well, I don't love this is, phone. <laughs> well, the, my, my main problem with it, because I was, of, of course I consider that, because I'm a whore. But I, <laughs> I, I was looking at that, and I, I was thinking, but I will have to sell my iTunes account as well. Mm. Because otherwise it w- won't work. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's just a step too far. And actually, I do like my email. I, I actually, it's. I think if you offer me, I'm look. I was looking at the auctions, and I was seeing phones going for like two thousand, three thousand dollars, and that that kind of thing. If you, I, I think if somebody offered me three thousand dollars for my email account, even though I don't necessarily have an incredible online presence uh, or anything like that, I really love my email account. My Gmail account is magical and I don't want to lose it. And I realize I'm inviting the whole world to try to hack it and and hold it for ransom <laughs> because apparently it's now worth thousands of dollars to me. I don't think I'd give it up for that though. I would say if somebody offered me 4,000 for my email address, I would say somebody who's willing to pay four would pay five or six. Yeah. So let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, and I'm trying to figure out where my line is because every uh, there's got to be a line somewhere. Uh, two thousand, I don't think, is the line for me. I think it would actually be two thousand dollars worth of hassle for me to have to change mail accounts and everything like that. <laughs> um, Three thousand, I'm starting to think about it. Four thousand, I'm starting to get on board. And I think if it would came down to five thousand dollars, I'd do it. I, Euros, I've come, maybe dollars. I've, no, <laughs> I've come to that conclusion now. And if somebody wants to offer me five thousand dollars for my email account, I will listen to that offer very closely. Okay, send your send your messages to. Oh wait, th- th- well they need your email then. Okay, um, <laughs> later. Yeah. I think contact me because that is a junk mail account that I signed mine up for. So you just. Let that money come on in. Come on. You're, you're wrecking my scam here. I was gonna sell <laughs> I was gonna sell S McSpammerton at gmail.com for uh, I want S McSpammerton. I'm you, you want it? Because I kinda wait, have wait, it actually. Okay, wait, I'm losing control of this. I, I want control of it. <laughs> Bill, did you play anything else? Except oh the eBay except, except trying to sell my my mail account. Um 
that was actually it. Uh, that was the, the games this week for me. Uh, how about yourself, Leonor? What kind of excitement did you get into into the world of MMOs this week? I played Lotro and was idle for most of the time. <laughs> Isn't that your normal Lotro thing? <laughs> Building up it, them out. Just, you're saying it still counts as playing. I would disagree with that. It's, yes, it's like it the counts. best screensaver ever. <laughs> it is. And no, Eve can, is the best be screensaver. Social, oh, right. You can be social. You know, it's great. It's like it's like the biggest, biggest twenty gig messenger you could ever have. <laughs> <laughs> I did play them. Uh, I did get into the the PvP over the weekend on I think it was just Friday, and I'm nine percent away from getting rank thirteen finally. Wow. So I, I did get to play a little bit. Um, I was mostly idle though because I was doing a lot of things for uh, Chris and and the network and and getting some things. Uh, set up and fixed up and, and whatnot so that I, I just had the game on because my friends are there. You know mm. how that is. Yep. Um, I started thinking about some of the things that you've been talking about, Bill, and which was beating five games on your Steam list. Mm -hmm. So I got Steam open and I beat Orcs Must Die 1 and 2. I love Orcs Must Die. I I just I, I've got both one and two and it's just such cheap, cheesy fun. There's just yep. nothing like especially if you've had a bad go. Like I, I could see I could see where this is a good thing for you, because in the moors, uh, you might have a bad time and you might be overrun by orcs and everything like that. There's nothing for taking out frustration against orcs. There's nothing better than orcs must die for that, because it's just like putting orcs through a wood chipper essentially yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly i only have two do i miss something if i don't play one because i only have two on steam no no i haven't installed it yet <laughs> there there is they there is a very token story like imagine the most token story attached to a game that's all about just complete and utter mindless slaughter that you can imagine the the, the greatest magnitude of that amount of story just oh, it's a, it's a Rambo movie. Yeah, exactly. It's yep. it's it's there's just the flimsiest excuse for you to be there massacring orcs. Mm -hmm. And if you go into the options of part two, you can go through a lot of the original levels. They're all in the classic section. Oh, okay. So the part two has a lot of things. It's very cool. Okay, cool. it's the one to own. Mm -hmm. What else did you play? Uh, did you I got to play. I got to play EverQuest Next Landmark. Ooh. What did you uh, think? I, I, I got into that, and, and uh, I was having some fun with it. And I was talking to Chris at the moment when I was playing this, too. He was playing it as well, um, editing some video or something that he was working on. I was like, hey, how do you like it? And he's like, I'm digging a hole. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that was the only answer I got from him. <laughs> digging a hole in my heart. Oh, sorry. Or for for somebody in particular, or just. <laughs> <laughs> but but what did you what did you do in it? Because I I I'm definitely curious what your experiences was with holes um, online. Uh, my my first question to Chris was is can we actually talk about this, because the game isn't finished. And we can talk and about checked. it. You can, he he you went can. and checked, and he said, "Yeah, they, they they took the NDA NDA off of it right away." I was like, "Oh, because you can't zoom out from your character, which sucks." Because when you're digging holes and stuff, your camera's <laughs> right up in there. Um, so you get it. How, what does the dirt look like? What are the graphics on the dirt? Because I imagine you must have got a pretty good view. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, the textures look great. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have have a camera in a hole, it better has a good texture. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't do any building yet. I've been doing. I've been like clearing out the uh, the claim. The, the the claim is you put a, a big square down where you want to start building things. That's your area. So I put that down, which was really hard to put down in the first place. I don't know if that's exactly how it's supposed to be or if they're still fixing that. But I, I had to wander around and find a spot that this box would actually work on. 
Um, so I started clearing the area out, and then I started digging pretty much like Minecraft, um, looking for uh, base metals and more rare metals to make better things, to, to make better tools, to make, you know, stuff like that. And um, the, the digging... <laughs> The digging was a pain in the ass. It was really, really painful. You have to, you're, you're digging forward, and it's not like Minecraft where you break a brick, and you break a brick, and you move forward. You have to hold the mouse, and you have to dig in a in a large oval, and then or move square, forward a little bit, yeah. yeah, and then move, you know, and dig another oval and move in. And each each one of these hits takes a little while, and you. There's about, I'd have to say about 15 times you have to hit in there. Because if there's any little nugget or something that you didn't take out, your character will not go forward into the hole. So you have to find this thing in the dark, knock out that little corner that you missed, and then you can move in and then you can dig in further. So it's like digging the shape of your character out in a mountain (laughs) as you keep going. Well, you have to do it in teams. (laughs) <laughs> I think that you can't do it in teams because if you come out of there and you stay out of there for about five minutes, the hole fills in. I hadn't noticed that. That explains why I couldn't find my holes again. I thought it was just me. I was I was actually in there and I went to go cook some food, and the mountain ejected me out. <laughs> <laughs> I was on top of the mountain. I'm like, where the hell am I? I'm looking around, I'm like, uh, I think my hole closed up. And I couldn't find it. So it was gone. It was gone. I was like, oh. It not only did it close up, but it ejected you. I think you should see a doctor very, very mm-hmm. soon. Yeah. Um, turn somebody had to say it, damn it. <laughs> I was going to say, um, there's so many jokes here. There's so many, that's what she said. And I just didn't want to be that guy. So I'm glad you. I'm glad you yeah. opened up that hole for me, Harry. <laughs> I, I, I took. I, t- I took the bullets. I. Um, did you do anything else except um, get ejected? Dig holes. holes. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Harry Hall, damn it. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's that's it. Okay. Well, I have similar experiences with EverQuest Next Landmark. Um, I am. I am appalled and I'm disgusted by a game. That's just so obviously not finished. Oh, wait, it's an alpha. <laughs> it's, <laughs> the, the, the great thing is, and I, I really like this, and I, th- this is the best thing uh, SOE could have done. If you start up EverQuest Next Landmark for the first time, you get a very uh, extensive video of uh, John Smedley talking and explaining exactly what it is you are about to see. And what you're about to do, and what an alpha is, and what your part in it is, and why you are there, and uh, this is great because it it makes it so clear that the game is a not finished, and b it's a cooperative process, and c you've paid probably a lot of money for something that's not finished and is going to be free to play in a few months. <laughs> so that's absolutely not painful for anybody I know. I'm sorry, boss, friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's really sad. He, he actually, he's a great guy. He knows a lot about MMOs and I love podcasting with him. And But he just kind of somehow missed the, 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 the news that, that, that Quest Next Landmark was going to be a free-to-play game. So in, in our uh, chat room, when we were discussing the next, po- next podcast, he was like, he was very happily saying, I'm in the alpha. I paid 50 euros and I'm in the alpha for EverQuest Next Landmark. <laughs> so I say, you do know it's going to be free-to-play. And he says, Ah, oh, you're kidding. That's not true. So I linked to the original FAQ, and and, and the silence was deafening. You, you hear you hear that little tear hit the ground. Oh, <laughs> he was, must have been pretty sad. Maybe his hole closed. Ah, uh, no. Nah, but I, I um, the the thing is the the, the the problem I had with the pricing of the the landmark because full disclosure, I, I'm pressed, so I got access and. As community, as, as a uh, an MMO podcast, we have some we have access to the to the alpha, so we we do not have to pay for it because we write about it, talk about it, do stuff to it, like dig holes in it, poke in it. Um, so, but um, if if it would have been ten euros or ten dollars to have alpha access, 
I would not even have had that big of a problem with it because that would be kind of a a barrier to entry to people uh, seeing it just as a demo, you know. But the big the big bucks they ask, like a hundred dollars for f- full full access, I think that's a bit steep for a free to play game. Don't you agree? Well, there's three packs. There's a there's the hundred dollar. There's a sixty dollar, and then there's the twenty. But just asking for a hundred dollars for a free to play game. Yeah. It's, it's that's, that's just, too much. It's even the sixty dollar one. I think is way too much. It feels almost like a Ferrari dealership. You only need to sell a couple of those, and it's worthwhile. Yeah, I think that's it. You just need a few. Um, what, who was it? P.T. Barnum. Who said some people were born every minute? Suckers. All right. Mm. Um, no. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, gonna get it for Barnum. this. Mm. Anyway, um, but I played it and I liked it. Uh, I, I really liked what I saw, except I didn't understand what I was looking at. I had the same experience with digging holes and not understanding what I was doing and why it was working. And, uh, coincidentally, I played Minecraft the day before and the experience, as you say, is is much rougher. And I miss just being able to pick up blocks and dropping blocks and creating a house in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I... Uh, I started uh, putting down my claim and I noticed that I did it wrong because my claim, the big cube, was floating above the area that I was standing yep. on. I did that like so, three times. Yeah, I had to do it again and, uh, and, and, and claim a bit of ground, not just the sky. Can't take the sky away from me. Firefly reference. Uh, oh. So oh, no, I actually uh, I, I tried to build something, but it just took too long. It felt like actually building something in the real world, like putting tiny little bricks side to side. And I, I had a row of bricks, and it was all slanted because it doesn't it it doesn't automatically align. It just follows the curvature of the hill you're standing on. So I felt this is not going to be. I'm, I'm, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to spend hours and hours building a house. It's probably going to look like crap anyway because I'm terrible at these things. In Minecraft, at least it could be big. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's, ugly. it's big. <laughs> I, I think that you need to get recipes to unlock more crafting tools to move the, the things that you want them to move or what. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know exactly yet either. Here's my first feedback. Make let me make big stuff, not mm-hmm. tiny yeah. things. Don't give me Lego Lego blocks to build a freaking house because that's what it feels like right now. Mm-hmm. Anyway, okay, I'm not bitter. Um, played El- uh, Elder Scrolls Online, and um, I have to do another another article about my impressions. And while I was playing the fir- the first weekend, the first weekend was uh, I think two weeks ago that I played it uh, at home. I played it for a couple of hours at PAX and I had fun with it. And I played it at um, Gamescom, had fun with it there too. Had fun last week, and this week, the more I played it, the more I realized I was thinking, "Oh, I, want- I can't wait to play Skyrim again," and that's not good. You don't want to feel if you are playing an MMO version of a game. You don't want to have the, 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 the continuing feeling that you actually much rather play the offline version that you already own rather than a new one that's coming out and it's going to ask 15 bucks a month. So I think the game needs fun. I, I think the problem is, too, that Skyrim, that was the, the lure, and we're so used to playing the, these these Elder Scroll games offline that even if you go to a, a MMO, you want to go back to the old game anyway. Well, so well, it's going to be kind of hard for them to break that. And that's the thing. I, that's exactly how I felt. I, I went into the MMO, and it was certainly Elder Scrolls-ish. It reminded me of the Elder Scrolls franchise. They, they, they got that. It was actually not even that... It, it's not like it was that bad. It wasn't... No. No, I, no. I I didn't hate it. It, it, it I mean I I I I've said a lot of hateful things about uh the about uh ESO and I didn't hate it, but I would have rather been playing Skyrim and I think that kind of comes back to what I've been saying is stick to what you're good at. Mhm. I I think it's got something like um Grand Theft Auto. I'll tell you how I played Grand Theft Auto when I first get it out of the package. I get through the the story, the beginning story, and then I go out and I just create havoc. I start running people down with my car, 
beating them in the head with whatever I could find. And Skyrim and Morrowind and Oblivion, as soon as I got past the story, I saved and just started creating havoc. Uh, jumping up on tables and just knocking everything off of the tables and <laughs> killing people and getting in trouble with guards and running away from guards. And this game's not going to have any of that, is it? No, no, absolutely not. Um, it's, it's. I think it's not even not even possible to attack an NPC, at least not the ones that are supposed to be uh, uh, friendly to you. So you, you can't you can't kill a store owner and kill and take everything in his store. In fact, and I I I'm not I'm not knocking the game for the fact that you can't pick up everything that you see. I mean, of course you can't. We don't have the technology for that yet. And even if we did have the technology, you can't trust a thousand players with a world that you can pick up everything <laughs> and drop it everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen in my lifetime. So <clears throat> I, I so hope I'm going to be wrong about this, but at least it's not happening now, not this decade, mm -hmm. not this year. Um, but but it's 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 but what you what you have left over then? What what I liked about Elder Scrolls games, uh, Oblivion, Morrowind. Uh, I loved Morrowind and Oblivion and Skyrim. Skyrim a little less, but that's basically because it was so cold out there. The snow just <laughs> agree with me. And, other than that, the, the idea of a simulation, it feels like a, the, the, the physics, the holodeck aspect of it. The, one of the first things they demonstrated when Oblivion was released, before it was released, was a video of the starting cell and you with your bow and arrow and shooting at a uh, bucket that was hanging from a chain and see the bucket actually a bit, uh, hanging lopsided because of the weight of the arrow into it. And that kind of detail of the physics... And uh, th that's what I want from my Elder Scrolls game. Mm -hmm. That yeah. combined with that epic uh, exploration. And it has exploration. And it, it has discovery. And there are quests strewn about that you don't necessarily find if you don't go looking for them. And that's all good. But it isn't, uh, it isn't as deep and as rich as I want it to be. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and maybe it will be in 10 hours of, uh, more of, uh, or 10 levels later. But I think then it's too late. Mm -hmm. because you want that experience now. Uh, uh, last thing I want to mention briefly is Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns. It was a game that I uh, wrote a review for, for both a website. Well, they don't know yet. They, they don't have that yet because I still have to hand it in. And for a newspaper. And Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns is... How shall I put this? Uh, it's what happens if somebody discovers a uh, uh, a ten year old has written a fan fiction script, and somebody threw a lot of money at that. Oh, hmm. it is the, the writing is atrocious. The, there are <laughs> scenes that make no freaking sense. There is this big event. You as and I will just skip over the, the completely convoluted, ridiculous plot that, that that's dri driving the whole thing. But there is this point in the story that you as her heroine Lightning have to enter a castle, and the castle is guarded, and you can't get in. And the only way that you can think of of entering this castle is by participating in this big, huge play that's celebrated outside of the castle on a big stage. But rigging the fireworks to blow up the stage so it tips over and you al and allows you to run over it and get over the walls into the castle. Awesome. No, it doesn't stop there. It's not, you, you do this in cahoots with the director of the frigging play because he says, well, I'm just tired of doing the same play every day. <laughs> Let's spruce it up a little bit. Let's blow the whole thing up and see if that will make a glorious new bit of my career. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> and there, there is a scene, not much later, there are several characters of the Fran Final Fantasy franchise that are stuck in, uh, in the game and you have to bring them back to sanity. Otherwise, they transform into monsters or something. And this one guy, he's actually beginning to transform. And he, 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 when he's transforming, he's he's actually standing there like a a drunk Walking Dead, going, <laughs> <laughs> looking up and drooling. And I, it was supposed to be this big dramatic moment, and I was like, oh no! Do, do you know the feeling <laughs> if you? See, you know, if you 
you've seen these bits on TV shows or school play. You've seen school plays. Yeah. And you've seen the kid who is just unable to get any line out naturally at all. And you you know how you feel because you you feel actual physical pain while you see that. And on top of that, the game has a time limit. You have this big sprawling world to explore with all kinds of quests that you have to do, 90% of which are fetch quests to things you don't know where they are. And there is an actual hard time limit in the game with a clock constantly running, not a fictional clock. That I mean, if you play a standard JRPG and you get at the end of the game, 60, 70 hours in, and the big boss is standing in his lair and he's saying, ah, oh, you're just in time to see me destroy the world. It doesn't matter if you get in a hundred hours to, to get there or a thousand, and if you right. don't do anything, he will just stand there politely waiting for you to take action before he destroys the world. This game has an actual freaking count down that forces you to finish the game within 13 hours that you can extend by po- this is, it is j- how can you explore <laughs> a world with fast quests and not know where everything is with a freaking time limit that will actually give you a game over screen if you don't finish the game within that yeah but that's how you add replay value that was no that's <laughs> how you watch <laughs> Okay, I, I thought we had like the best Harry Rage in forever there. And then Leonor, you justified it for about two seconds there, and we got a burst of rage that was even above what Harry had before. So bravo, really bravo. That sounds really close to uh uh Nintendo sixty four's no. Zelda Majora's Mask where they gave yes. you a time limit. No, but the, the, everybody no. Majora's mask works. <laughs> this I'm gonna doesn't... break them, Bill. I'm gonna break them watch. <laughs> <laughs> you shut your motherfucking mouth. <laughs> Quick, compare it to Eve. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this is, I mean, I, 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 I was actually playing it and playing it, and you have to play it for many hours because you have to write a review. And mm-hmm. I, I have to write a review. I cannot make a review if I don't play the game. Mm-hmm. And if I'm playing a game within a deadline that actually has a built-in deadline that doesn't really make me feel relaxed, <laughs> you know? It <laughs> doesn't like, really divert my thoughts <laughs> on the truth of the world. <laughs> like stress from two sides. It's like you're oh. in a vice. It's, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> it, it has some good bits. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you give it, uh, I won't spoil your review, but. Yeah. Uh, 8 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it's, it's, no, it's, it's, I, a Final Fantasy game, I played, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Bravely Default on the 3DS, which is from Square as well. And that's a traditional Final Fantasy game, except in name, and that is a lot of fun. Mm. And this is just this is what happens if a couple of guys who create this this trilogy of Final Fantasy 13 games just fall in love with their own idea and stick with it and just keep throwing money at it. But it's just a terrible, horrible idea. It's it's like the previous Killzone games. Mm-hmm. It's um, <clears throat> okay. Anyway. Um, that's it for me. I'm going to take a lie down. We're going to listen to some music and we're going to come back to the news. First bit we're going to talk about is EverQuest Next Landmark, and we've got a couple of stories about that. Uh, first, is the game is in alpha, as we discussed before. Uh, there is we have a link in our show notes that actually uh, allows you to sign up, and if you want to, you can be part of the alpha by paying for it. And be aware that the game is not yet finished. Um, I think the the first major thing we'd like to, major thing we'd like to discuss is something Bill is going to mention, isn't it, Bill? Um, yeah, well, uh, yes, we're going to jump straight into that, I guess. Um, over <laughs> on 
Smedley's blog where uh, it, basically a, a good old John, because me and Smed were on we're on like first name basis. We, we're bros, <laughs> you know. Uh, basically made a, a blog post there and talked about how uh, there uh, Sony and Sony online is is basically making a thrust to become a the, the sandbox company we're a sandbox company now and they talk about uh, the direction that they want to be taking their games in and everything like that and it, it the, the thrust of the post I'm not going to read it off word for word here or anything like that the thrust of the post is that that they're wanting to build sandbox games and I have to admit this has kind of been a bit of an exciting step it's it's a it's an interesting it's interesting is probably the better word uh that they're going back to the roots of for something that they did really well and i'm going to go back to the old star wars galaxies thing because the, the what people loved about star wars galaxies was the open-endedness of the sandbox the sandboxiness of it if you will uh and i, I mean obviously they're famous for being having be made some of the most on-rail games in the world. I mean, you could argue that the, the, quite easily that EverQuest is just the, the – it's like the definition of an on-rails type yeah. game. You have you have very certain objectives that everyone goes for that are very hard, but you could still say there's not really anything else to do except work towards these very specific goals. Star Wars Galaxies <laughs> is was not really that case until they started messing around with it and then people started hating it. So I, I feel like this is kind of, again, like I mentioned earlier in the show, it's it's like they're kind of stepping back to something that they did really well and that they're actually good at and could kind of separate themselves from their contemporaries, which are, for the most part, those big, like the, the, all the, a lot of the big games, almost all of the big games right now are very on rails type games. Uh, the big dollar ones, like, I mean, you could talk about uh, uh, the Old Republic as being a big dollar game right now, because I guess sort of it is. But certainly the, uh, certainly where uh, Wildstar is going, where, where uh, 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 ESO is going, where, where Guild Wars 2 is already gone, it's, it, the, the, you could kind of argue that those are fairly on rails games. So taking that out of the equation is, is really separating themselves from that so what do you guys think is this is this a good move is this something that uh that uh the sony should be working towards Leonor? um I, I think the the things that they have made progress with with the engine for everquest with the the whole voxel system and the destructibility that they can do with that and and you can just dig down to other planes of worlds that are underneath the world. And I, I think they want to take that, pick it up, and put it in other genres and just make games around that system because they, they have so much time and money into that, that, that system right now, that engine, that they could use a lot of things uh, with it, like if they did pick up the Star Wars license and put it there, that I think that would be ideal for Star Wars. Well, don't you think that they don't need? I mean, the thing is, uh, when Star Wars Galaxies was around, big a big complaint by a lot of players was that okay, it's a good sandbox, but it doesn't feel like Star Wars. Many people said that. I mean, it had landmarks, it had the planets, it had the, the sci-fi feel, but it didn't feel like actual Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And I think if they were not restrained by a license and if they were actually taking all the ideas that I've said this last week, and, and apparently Smedley agrees with me, so he's a good guy. Um, if they take all the things <laughs> they've learned from their previous games and uh, look towards what makes these things unique. I mean, if we want a linear story progression, we don't need other players. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but for true emergent gameplay, for things to happen that are unpredictable and to have exploration and to have something to share with and to be creative, you need other people to show you creativity too and to, sh to share your discoveries with. And I think that is the greatest direction they can take for the MMO genre uh, as a whole. Mm -hmm. And uh, Guild Wars 2 is kind of flirting with that idea. Uh, but them going into a fully emergent 
Eve-like experience, but ac- more accessible. But that's actually what he's literally saying in the post. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He says, uh, there's a great example of this with e- uh, today with EVE Online. It's a brilliantly executed system where the players are pretty much in charge of the entire game. Um, the, he, he's not talking about copying EVE, obviously, but just the idea that people, rather than game creators provide the content is is awesome well and i think that's that's a really good example to be pulling from too because eve obviously is has delved into something in the gaming psyche that is that people kind of long for uh i mean eve is a is a challenging game to get into it's it's uh very difficult it could be very costly uh in terms of loss and everything like that as we as we found out with the (laughs) the giant space battle a couple of weeks ago um but people still they, they have a willingness to invest in that because there's obviously a lot more that they themselves can get out of it. There's the chance that you could be, it's not even just that you can be a hero for completing all your quests and getting fancy armor or something like that. You can actually be an incredible, like you could, you could be a powerful character, like uh, somebody like not just powerful in terms of stats, but actually like influence throughout your game. You can be, you can be a, you could manipulate a world in a way that's that you can't really do in another game because every other game has to be fair to all the other players. Eve doesn't care about that. Eve is quite happy to have kingmakers and 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 or to be a kingmaker and to have somebody be an emperor and ever and someone else being a bootlicker and and that's that's just the way of the world and they're putting that into a game. So if if uh, if as Sony is willing to use that as a model, that could make for some really interesting things in the future and it doesn't even necessarily have to cannibalize from eve i think there's room for a couple for a few games that actually operate like that too yeah i I, I, I agree that they have a a large edge and that they spent a lot of money and and investment in and they really want to keep using it in a few other different things and they are you know this post says you know they are looking at eve and and a lot of other things so yeah I, i really do think that that is their goal Mm-hmm. But don't don't get uh, don't focus too much on the voxel system. I mean, it's no. not the voxels no. that make the sandbox. Mm-hmm. And Eve is f- almost fun despite itself. <laughs> it <makes> it, <laughs> um, and it's exactly I I've written written about this many times. So I'm so happy to hear Bill agree with me. So Bill is smart as well. Well, I have my um, moments. <clears throat> the, but but the, it's it's the difference between your parents telling you you're special and actually ma- doing something that makes you special. <laughs> it's 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 yeah. no i mean it, it, in world of warcraft the lord of the rings online every quest deck says oh hero i'm so glad you are here because you are the only one who can save us and then the next guy comes ah hero i'm so glad you're here you're the only one who can save us <laughs> and and there's just a line forming behind you and the guy's getting tired but he's with the same enthusiasm ah hero i'm so glad you can join us you're the only one who can save us Big piles of orc livers next to him. I was going to say, um, in my mind, he's actually getting more and more monotone the more times he hands out the same quest. Oh, hero, you're the only one who can save us. Uh, finally, hero, quest, go. Yeah, but that guy's making a killing, so he, he's got to keep saying it. It's a scam. It's yeah. a scam because he's going to sell those, those, those orc livers for Bitcoin. Anyway... Uh, probably makes them for, makes drugs out of them. But the, 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 the big thing is, yes, sandboxes. And we are going to the next story, Leonor. Tell me. Uh, real quick. Uh, Prime World, which is a role-playing MOBA, uh, is going to be officially released soon. Uh, they haven't given a date yet, but anybody that is in the game right now that has been playing it in beta... Uh, will be rewarded with 3,000 gold. Uh, The gold is the currency that you buy with actual real cash. And the the most expensive character that you can buy in their store is 499 gold. So 3,000 gold will go a long way. You could buy a bunch of characters. You could buy a bunch of different skins for your characters or upgrade a lot of the stuff that you have in your kingdom that you're building. So if anybody is playing Prime World right now, go ahead and log in and you can get that 3,000 gold. And then you can buy six characters and have six gold left. And what are you going to do with that? <laughs> you're you're going to stare at it and, and 
damn prime world. Take take your your mom's credit card and, and get more gold. <laughs> Any opinions but, on prime world? But it's a great deal. I only I already have six <laughs> gold. I only need the rest. <laughs> but mom. <laughs> You're special, but you're not <laughs> going to get more gold. <laughs> you're the only okay. one that can save us. We have a trailer in the show notes. Go to it, take a look at that. And if you like MOBAs, I pity you. Um, <laughs> we have a teaser trailer from Liner, sorry, uh, Guild Wars 2. Uh, they're going to do a new content update, uh, I think February 15th or 14th. Anyone know? Soonish. I'm going to say uh, February 18th. Thank you. I'm going to say yes. Today. I'm going to say we have a trailer for what they're going to do. And this actually sounds promising. They are, uh, the new content update is called Escape from Lion's Arch. And there's going to be a siege in Lion's Arch for you non-Guild Wars 2 players. And I pity you too. Uh, is uh, Lion's Arch is basically like Stormwind or Orgrimmar in Guild Wars. It is the central hub where everybody goes to to trade and use the auction house and craft and, and, and do stuff like that. There is a big portal to one of the major um, uh, for, to each of the major areas in the game and there is a instance entrance for one of the most popular instance clusters in the game. And this is apparently going to be under attack and um, the, the teaser trailer actually teases the idea that or, that uh, Lion's Arch might actually fall. And given that they are talking about a living world that is uh, evolving over time and things are subject to change, I would not be surprised if we would see some major changes in the landscape in the coming uh, coming weeks or months. Guys, I, what do you think? I am really excited about the prospect of this. The, the the thought that first came to my mind when I when I heard about this is the it's it's really the ultimate goal in my mind as far as world reshaping is going all the way back to Ashron's Call and uh, Arwick, uh, later known as Charwick, because it was nuked off the face of the earth with a meteor, like quite I, literally. Uh, uh, for anyone who hasn't played Asheron's Call before, Arwick was the the perfect kind of. It was it was it was it wasn't really a major city because it was tucked way up in kind of like the northeast corner of the map, but it was good because all the crafting stuff was densely there, den- densely put together. There was good to vendors nearby and everything like that. There was some good uh, d- instances that you could jump into relatively nearby, and it turned out to be the the most populated city in Asheron's Call. So what did they decide to do let's just blow the crap out of it with a meteor and that's what they did and it was awesome it was it was sad because i actually kind of missed the the center but it still went away so if if uh guild wars 2 has the cojones to actually nuke into a crater the biggest city in the entire game i will be very very impressed even if they just knock over a major building or two that's permanently damaged forever that's even still at least a point in their favor so i, I it, it this this could be a, a a neat thing or it could be disappointing because lands arch goes back to the exact same way it always was but well, it is the, the the biggest trick in in gaming to make you care mm-hmm uh, to, to actually make you emotionally involved. First, they make something useful, and then they take it away from you. Yes. That's the only way that you can make players feel something, because we're dead inside. Yep. Well, we have, <laughs> a little to, bit. we have to ask the question then, uh, okay, if this is the biggest populated city, you know, that, where everybody goes to, what's the next one? No, it, it, well, the, the thing is, uh, I remember when, uh, uh, I think when Orgrimmar was under attack for one of the World of Warcraft updates... You had a lot of angry players in World of Warcraft, which was a first. You never had people complain before that. <laughs> They're such a docile community. They're really yeah. quite gentle. Yeah, pliable, uh, easygoing, mm. um, flexible. That's yeah. the word. Um, really. But, uh, pleasant, <laughs> really. Overall, just yeah. pleasant. Yeah. Just a bunch of nice guys. So th- those those friendly ang- angels from above uh, actually uh, k- kind of worried that they're regular routine would be upset by the events of the attack of the what's it and the evil thing <laughs> and th- that was actually the case but then they set up all the crafting stations and whatever in a camp outside <laughs> so everybody was just able to do their thing but outside yeah. which is scary for MMO players because outside <laughs> uh, I, 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 
Well, to be fair, the the teleportation system in Guild Wars 2 makes it so if you really need to go set up shop somewhere else, there's actually quite a few other places you could go with just the tiniest amount of effort. The most major cities have uh, all the services, but not just as neatly tucked together as Lion's Arch. Anyway, but it's 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 good that I the the the, the thing I hope uh, that they will still not make the updates come too quickly, so that I actually have the time to enjoy them before everything has gone away. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, I think it that's could just it. totally destroy the, the the city and have it rebuilt within two months. They could do it in a day because they're devs and it's not real. Yeah. Sorry for deconstructing it. Um, what? Real? <laughs> What's this real? <laughs> What's this reality See, thing? The beauty talking? here is I'm going to have all my dailies done, I think, by February 18th. So I can actually focus on the event. And I'm excited about that. I should definitely do that. But I don't have the time. I wish. Um, Bill, I think we have a story that's really up your alley. Right up my alley. Well... I, I am I'm excited about this too. Like, this is an exciting show, really. But this is <laughs> uh, Dark Age of Camelot is opening up uh, a free week for lapsed accounts, and my account is about as lapsed as it can possibly be. So if you've had a pre uh, a, a Dark Age account, uh, Dark Age of Camelot subscription, I haven't read the fine print, so I don't know how it's almost recently pro-lapsed. or uh, or in in unrecently in recently. I have to get my dictionary out. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the what the constraint is, but uh, if you have a Dark Age Camelot account, you can go back for a week. And I, I really want to take advantage of this. And I, I don't care if the graphics are terrible. I don't care if it's it's a shadow of what current games are or anything like that. I need to have the nostalgic feels for this. So I will be on this and I will hopefully have a report for it for you next week on I, MMO okay. Report. Or if you, because. if, uh, if, a bunch of people do go on to this game and, and log back in that, that haven't played it in such a long time, and then they all leave after that week. Do you think that they're going to try to change the game up at that point, like make it free to play? I, you know, I don't know. I mean, they just went through the, the, the management change uh, where uh, they, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, shoot. Chris Metzen? Nope. That guy. Kurt Cobain? That guy, you know. Uh, know, Barack Obama, no, someone else. Sorry, um, it, I can't remember the name of the dude. George uh, Clinton, the, the, for, the former producer of the game, just peeled off the the ownership and the development of uh, Dark Age Camelot and Ultima Online into his own company. So, I, I is he I, doing uh, Camelot on Chain now? Uh, no, that's a different. That's Mark Jacobs. Uh, that is a <laughs> that's the one diff- I was thinking of. <laughs> that's a different former <laughs> producer of uh, Dark Age Camelot. I'm also excited about Camelot Unchained, but I'll save that. I don't want to tr- uh, trod upon Dark Age of Camelot's moment here. So, uh, if you if you have an account, head over to uh, to we'll have a link in the show notes. Uh, you can also go to accounts.eamythic.com, sign in there, and get your free week and try it out. Leonor. There is a game that is turning quite a few heads right now on a lot of sites. It is called Bless. It is an Asian MMO that is a story-driven fantasy game. Um, it is using the Unreal Engine 3 and is apparently the latest in cutting-edge graphics for MMOs online today. Uh, when you guys seen the trailer, what did you guys think of it? Well, the... The, the the only thing I know about Bless is the graphics, basically, and I was mm-hmm. actually somewhat impressed with it. It's 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 got that kind of uh, anime ish type character design and that kind of thing, but it's not so crazy over the top that we've seen in in other games. It actually like there's armor that covers women from neck to boots, which is just insane, I know, but they <laughs> found a way to do it. What? <laughs> women uh, with it, clothes on? I, I, I it hate... actually kind of reminded me of an Asian Skyrim. A little bit, I could see it. It, it almost seemed like a, uh, we talked about it in the show notes, but to me, the graphics almost seemed like like the player characters uh, were hearkening a little bit to how Guild Wars 2 is doing their characters, or at least that's how I, my point of reference, because probably because I'm playing Guild Wars 2 more than anything else, but they looked a little bit like that mm-hmm. with, with slight improvements. With the mobs, Harry pointed out that the mobs look a lot like they were taken from Terra. 
and maybe juiced up a little bit there. Anyway, it's a beautiful looking game. Uh, and if that's what you're looking for, then that could Ooh, very boobies. well be worth trying out. I see nudity. Oh, what? There is nudity. We have nudity. Oh, dang. This is the translucent blue elf chick that is almost n- naked. In the trailer. Not in- not in my room. <laughs> <laughs> the trailer's in your room, Harry. I mean, Chris, Chris will be excited because there's ants. I guess there's that. I think the game looks pretty, and I wonder what it plays like because uh, generally they all play like lineage, mm-hmm. and lineage is not fun. Yeah, we'll I, I, re- I wanted to point this out. Uh, <clears throat> most of those games are pretty grindy. I, I like a lot of the grindy games. Um, th- those are the ones that I started playing and then grew up on. Um, this one is actually... They seem like they want to make it a story-driven game. Now, how deep that story is going to go, I have no idea. But you might you might grind like 50 levels before you get to see, you know, chapter two. Um, but it seems like they're trying to change things up a little bit, and I, I think that's kind of exciting. Mm-hmm. It's it's certainly worth a look. It's certainly worth some attention. I'm actually happy that there is uh, no uh, slowness in new MMOs reaching our shore. So, oh, bless him. <laughs> um, oh, smooth. <laughs> we are going to move on to uh, our final part of the show, which is our MMO flashback of the week. And this week we are briefly, and I mean briefly, <laughs> discuss going to discuss EverQuest Online Adventures, a game that was uh, set in Norath because it was an EverQuest game 500 years prior to the original EverQuest in the Age of Adventure. Uh, Unique in the sense that this was the actual very first console MMO in existence as far as I know. I think it even predates Final Fantasy XI because it actually came out before the hard drive peripheral for the PlayStation 2 uh, saw the light of day. So you had to install it on your memory stick, and that meant that the game was actually uh, mostly running from the disk and I think 7 megabytes of data on your memory stick, which would include the persistent bit of your character and stuff. Um, I never got into it, uh, not not for lack of trying, actually. (laughs) There was... Back in the day, I had a uh, a station access account, uh, which was uh, a press account, because I write. Uh, It's so good to write about games. Um, No, but I had access to all the the SV games, which was the the full stable back then. So uh, Star Wars Galaxies, EverQuest, EverQuest 2, Vanguard, the whole shebang. And I saw in the list EverQuest Online Adventures. And I tracked down a disc of the game somewhere in a second-hand pile in a game store and I got it home and I was so excited to finally try this beast of EverQuest Online Adventures and it didn't freaking work and the account was flagged and support looked at it and everybody tried to get me and it didn't work. I've never been able to get past the login screen <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's not necessarily funny, it was painful and I, I still wake up in cold sweat about it, I, but it was my experience with EverQuest Online. I, I'm Adventure. laughing, it, this is pain laughter I'm having, <laughs> there's just actual tears on my face for it, sadness I, you, you would think I have a very terrible life ranting about Final Fantasy and other free games, I suffer so much, <laughs> I suffer from my art um, I, I was trying to, p- to pinpoint the vintage of EverQuest Online Adventures graphically. And uh, we were talking about it it, 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 early in the game. We were kind of comparing it to it to uh, contemporary games that look kind of the same. We're trying to Mm -hmm. pinpoint the actual era. I kind of picked the original Unreal Engine as the one that this kind of reminded me of the most. I'm not sure why, but that's the vibe that I got from this. What do you guys think? It, it, going back to 2003 and give or take five or ten years or whatever, uh, what do you think? Where, where, do, where does uh, EverQuest Online tech fall in your mind, Leonor? This, this kind of uh, it, it reminded me of Morrowind, but I remember Morrowind being more detailed as well Mm -hmm. um it it seemed more like um i I always make jokes about this uh, nintendo 64 graphics where everybody's just kind of thin and kind of blurry 
And uh, that's like the, what the system can do. It, it was kind of like Morrowind on the Nintendo 64. Mm. Mm. Okay. But, but then, then on the PlayStation 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a port of a port of a port. Well, I, I would say it's it it is uh, it was definitely not pushing the PlayStation to to its maximum graphical potential. Uh, I think it would be a, it's almost like a PlayStation One game upresed, very low resolution textures, but still uh, character models weren't that bad. It's the landscape that's actually uh, very blurry and low poly, and I think the grass texture was four pixel by five pixel or something. It's it, I, it, it's it's it, I for the time. I mean, let's look at what they've done. I mean, yep. it's pretty it's pretty damn ex- impressive to to run a full MO from a from one DVD yep. without installing much on the system because it doesn't have hard drive and still being online and massively multiplayer. <laughs> I I will I'm impressed. Oh, well, for sure. I'm not sorry. Stuff. I'm not trying to denigrate uh, it or anything like that. I think that's a fool's game to denigrate a game that's. 11 years old for having graphics that look old but it's yeah I, I just wish I, I got a chance to play it because one of the things the, one of the reasons I wanted to play it was because it was very it was very close to the vision of the original EverQuest mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as far as I've heard it might, must be people who are now screaming at their podcast and please do <laughs> because please scream at us we love that but um, yeah go ahead Lena. Um, you guys didn't bring this up at all. How graphically wise, how does it compare to the original EverQuest or something like Ashran's Call? It's better than the original EverQuest when it launched, definitely, because it's, it is a, a higher resolution and a higher poly count. But it's uh, worse looking than their uh, updates because they, they never stopped working on EverQuest. So they even... I've seen the original EverQuest compared to the current one, and that's actually also a big difference. Mm. So compared to launch EverQuest, this looks a lot better. Mm. It's it's we yeah. I, I don't disagree. <laughs> anyway, but that was EverQuest Online Adventures, uh, a game that ended in 2012. Actually, I didn't even realize that it closed last year. But it, it's been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, nine-year run, that's better than, uh, well, geez, we could probably list a whole bunch of games that that's better than. A game that was only on PlayStation 2. And I think about seven years of those empty. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, st- I, still, I still put it to you that they just forgot to shut the server down. <laughs> they forgot about it. <laughs> oh, um, we're gonna hear okay. from the guy that logged in for the last four years, <laughs> and he's gonna say, "I didn't know this was an MMO. <laughs> 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 I just played it." Um, okay, uh, we we briefly have to mention the, the 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 companies that make this MMO podcast possible, which is Doghouse uh, for one. Uh, Doghouse Systems uh, will give you double the RAM on your newly built PC if you use the coupon code MMOReporter at DoghouseSystems.com. And secondly, uh, one service that I most heartily recommend everybody who loves stories to check out, which is Audible. Uh, If you go to AudibleTrial.com, you can get uh, your first month free, AudibleTrial.com slash MMOReporter, I should say. You get your first month free of this fantastic audiobook uh, service. They will give give you credit for one free audio audiobook that is yours to keep even if you decide not to continue your su- subscription after the first month. So check it out. Um, DoghouseSystems.com, use the coupon code MMOReporter and AudibleTrial.com slash MMOReporter for your first audiobook free. And that brings us to the end of our show. And uh, Leonor, maybe you would be so kind as to actually tell us how people can reach us in the... Sure. They can reach us on our website at mmoreporter.com. They can email us at mmo.reporter at gmail.com. They can check us out on Facebook at www.flashbook.com slash mmoreporter. They can Twitter us at mmo underscore reporter. Uh, Harry, what is your Twitter? That's Harry Hall, H-A-R-R-Y-H-O-L. 
Better. Bill, what is your Twitter? You can tweet me at MMO Bill. M M O B I L L. You can Twitter me at Leonor, L A Y A N O R. And our voicemail is 616 666 6778. Or you can go on our webpage and click the widget that is on the right side of the page. Click it because we're really, really lonely. I wish that Steve would give us his Twitter account, but he, he just keeps it secret. I, I would just really like to thank silent co host Steve for coming out. He really, Steve, you really make this show. I, I, I don't know where we'd be without you. It would not be possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, thanks, Bill, for uh, being there and doing all the technical wizardry that we need to get the show out there, even though you had some trouble, but you made it work, damn it. Alaka Technical Zam. Um, Leonor, thank you for another show again. You ever take a uh, scotch tape and scotch tape your nose to your forehead? Yes, oddly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I okay. feel like there should be an end to this story. <laughs> I, <laughs> some to- stories are best left untold. Um, okay, that's it for me. I'm Harry, and I would like to thank everybody who downloaded this episode. Uh, thank you for downloading this episode. I hope you download this episode again and keep downloading this episode. Or well, at least next episodes or coming episodes of MMO Reporter. Uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, we hope to see you in game. Don't, 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 don't forget about your old you need to cherish each and every little character you've got, no matter what level they're at. Don't forget about your hopes you need to cherish each and every little character you've got, no matter what level. I feel charming, oh so charming, it's alarming how charming I feel, and so pretty that I hardly can believe I'm real, la 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 la.